Hey everyone, let's take a look at number four in section 7.5. This is the section on uh, partial fraction decomposition. Um, we're going to evaluate the following integral. Um, notice a couple things. Uh, the denominator here has been factored for us. If I were to multiply this all out, right, the highest degree term would be 9x cubed. So we have a cubic down here. We have a second degree polynomial up top. So the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. So it's in the form that we need it to be in to use the partial fraction decomposition method, which is basically to break this fraction up, this rational expression up into a sum of smaller fractions that we can easily or more easily integrate. Okay, so we're going to find the antiderivative of this function here. So remember how this will work. The denominator is factored. We have three different linear factors, right? So the first linear factor, x plus 4, will have a fraction in our decomposition that is some constant divided by x plus 4. And then the x plus 12 will have some constant divided by x plus 12. And then the last uh, linear factor, 9x minus 4, will have this fraction. So we will have potentially three fractions here. We have to find the values of a, b, and c to, to get this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by our least common denominator, which is just the product of these three binomials. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by this. Of course, when I multiply this side by the denominator, I just get the numerator. When I multiply a over x plus 4 times this denominator, the x plus 4 cancels, leaving x plus 12 times 9x minus 4. When I multiply this fraction by it, the x plus 12 cancels, leaving the x plus 4 times 9x minus 4. And then here, similarly, the 9x minus 4 cancels, leaving these two factors. So the, this uh, equation, we want to be true for all values of a, b, and c. So in particular, like, right, we can check uh, our shortcut, what we call our shortcuts, if you will. Uh, when x is negative 12, this equation should be satisfied. And of course, um, I, I get that from the fact that in the original equation, x could not be negative 12, nor could it be negative 4, for instance, because we would have division by 0. But the values of a, b, and c that we want are true for all values of x for which this equation work. So they're going to be true for all values of x in this equation down here, including x equal negative 12, x equal negative 4, etc. So if I plug in negative 12, what happens? What's the magic? Of course, notice over here, when I plug in negative 12, this will become 0, and a times 0 is just going to be 0. This whole term will be 0. Same here, right? Plugging in negative 12 here gives me 0, so this whole thing is 0. The only thing that will be left is the b, and we have to figure out what the coefficient will be and we can solve for b. Over on this side, plugging in negative 12, right, gives me this expression, which is equal to 73. Over here, I get negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. And, um, whoops, negative, uh, negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. 9 times negative 12 is negative 108 minus 4 is negative 112. Multiply those together, gives me positive 896, and so b is equal to dun, 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 73 divided by 896. Unfortunately, that fraction uh, has no common factors, and so it's a big, ugly mess, but that's what we get for b. Um, notice I can also have plugged in x equal negative 4. I'm not sure why I didn't do that first, but if I plug in negative 4, now what's going to happen? Of course, over here, I get uh, this expression here, which notice this is 16, and this will be negative 16, so that goes away. Just have negative 23. On this side, when I plug in negative 4, now notice this term is now 0, and the last term, and here I just get uh, negative 4 plus 12 um, is 8, and then negative 4 times 9 is negative 36 minus 4 is negative 40. So I get that negative 23, 8 times negative 40, negative 320a, right? I get those being equal. I can solve for a by dividing by negative 320. Remember, a negative divided by negative is a positive. So there's the value of a. And then last but not least, what's the last value of x that will give us a, a quick uh, a shortcut? Actually, at this point, I can plug in any value of x knowing the values of a and b, but it's much nicer to plug in the one that makes 9x minus 4 equal to 0 because then these will all go to 
to 0. And of course, 9x equals 4 is 0, and 9x is 4, x is 4 ninths. So I'm going to plug in 4 ninths into this equation on this side, which gives me that, equals, and then over here, notice when I plug in 4 ninths, this will be 0, this will be 0, and over here I'll have c, 4 ninths plus 4, times 4 ninths plus 12. So use your calculator to help if you need to, but this entire product becomes this fraction, and this expression here becomes this fraction. Dividing both sides by this, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this, gives me a value of c equal to this. Lovely little fraction there. So bottom line is we found the values of a, b, and c. I can now uh, integrate this function here by integrating these three fractions. I'm going to replace a with 23 divided by 320. And I'm going to bring the a out in front. In other words, a divided by x plus 4. That can also be written as a times 1 over x plus 4. So I'm just going to write it in that form. In fact, I'm going to do that for all these constants to make it a little bit easier. So I get a, which is 23 over 320 times 1 over x plus 4. And then plus, I'm going to bring the b down. Remember, b was 73 divided by 896, and that's times 1 over x plus 12. And then plus c, but c is negative, so plus a negative, I get minus c times 1 over 9x minus 4. Okay. Now, how much calculus have we done? Well, zero. <laughs> right now we do calculus, right? What's the antiderivative for this first term? Well, we've got a constant multiple, pull that out, and the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 4, if I let u be uh, x plus 4, then my du is just dx, and I get 1 over u du, which is natural log absolute value of u, where u is x plus 4. Um, similarly, over here, I get 73 over 896. The antiderivative of this will be the natural log of absolute value of x plus 12, very similar to what I did over there. Now, be careful here. I've got this minus what? This constant multiple. And then here, if I let u be uh, 9x minus 4, I get 1 over u. However, the du is 9dx, right? which means 1 ninth du is going to be dx. And so I've got a 1 ninth out here, right, times the natural log of absolute value of u. And so cleaning that all up, I get the following expression. I had to go to the next page, right? Uh, all these are the same. And then just multiply 9 times the 4480 gives me that denominator. What a lovely number plus my C at the end. Uh, I've also emphasized that, you know, we usually just put the absolute value bars around it, achieve once the parentheses, and then the absolute value bars. Kind of annoying, but there's how it should look and achieve for this particular problem. So again, the coefficients, uh, or the values rather, of A, B, and C in this case, um, maybe not the most convenient or nice looking numbers, but that's the way it works. Hopefully this is uh, helpful for you.